Oh, okay. Ready? Yeah. 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 All right. Oh, yeah. Welcome to the morning one drinking cup, the best place to be weekly in Wilmington, here at UNCWC, i.e. Um, maybe you're outside church. I think church is a great other option that's weekly, too. Um, yeah, welcome to Million Cups. I hope you grab your coffee if you like coffee or, or water or whatever. Helps fuel you in the morning. Um, more million cups is a weekly business presentation platform. Um, more of just a community of other entrepreneurs, ecosystem builders, um, business services, uh, and we give people. I'm gonna let people in. Uh, actually, Kevin, yeah. Um, we give people six minutes to present, followed by twenty minutes of Q and A. So they get to tell us a kind of a little bit. Uh, background of their business, kind of about how they got started, what they're doing now, um, mm -hmm. kind of what their future looks like, and um, basically how the community can help. And then y'all respond by offering recommendations, maybe some questions that they can uh, kind of figure out solutions to challenges and uh, can help rise the tide of the whole community. Keep us at number one for the number one startup ecosystem in the world. Yep. <laughs> so you all know me. I like to play videos. We'll let the late people walk in. Um, it's really awkward, I think, if people walk in at like the end of a presentation. Um, because I've done it. So I got a few videos to play, and some of these are based uh basically both um relating to Jim because Jim sent me this of uh, Elon Musk. I played it a while ago. Uh, uh, one part of this a while ago. And this is kind of like a different uh, part of that. So let me organize the tabs over here. Sweet. Um, so played a video a while ago of him saying the abyss in Eden Glass, but he kind of explains it in this one. So it's a little bit better. Um, I got another one, and this is a video from Jim's events. Um, was it last week now? Um, it's a little real I, I made for him um, of uh, Dr. Tony Addy of Phenonic uh, mentioning advice for funding and kind of business goals in general. And so, uh, let's minimize that. So I don't have to watch my own game the whole time.
Jack, they can't hear the videos. Sharing sound helps. Oh well. Um, Zoom. It's on Twitter. It's a Andrew with Becky for the first one with Elon Musk, and then this one. Um, we'll just replay it and let them watch it. You're gonna work just as hard for a billion dollar exit as you are for a hundred million dollar exit as you are for a ten million dollar exit. Set that theme, set the glimmer of greatness, set the aspirations for that billion dollar outcome and the market will pull you along the way. The reason entrepreneurs sometimes fail to grasp that is not because they're not thinking big, it's because they're consumed with valuation and ownership. Pro tip, if you're gonna come up to me and say, Tom, can you help me raise money or look at my business model, but I don't wanna give up control of my company, I will politely walk away from you. Phononica has raised now $220 wow. million dollars in venture capital and private equity. I do not own more than 50% of the company, but there's not a damn thing that could be done without my approval. Guys like Tim do not want to run your company for you. Exactly. But if you have that reserved <laughs> mindset, if I raise capital, it's gonna dilute me or limit my ability to grow my company respectfully you tend to get small outcomes you're gonna work yeah very very cool video um lots of great content and dream events so if you haven't checked them out yet i don't know what you're doing you should go to them. um well so that's kind of it so so good to play it twice Francine. um what else uh, i kind of want to hear some Startups that maybe y'all know of that aren't maybe in the spotlight or that you think are really cool that maybe you've heard online or you've seen on social media or your friend does it in some other city. What are some other startups out there that y'all think are cool? Big question. I'll go first. Uh, my friend in Asheville, my family friend in Asheville, he's making this little like drink floaty for like pools and hot tubs. And so instead of a little like plastic floaty that sits on the bottom, it's basically, I mean, you can see it's basically ping pong balls and like pantyhose. And so it kind of wraps around the drink to help it stay buoyant wherever the liquid is. Um, and so it's kind of very different you know, instead of being on the bottom and being very top yeah. heavy. That's cool. I just saw uh, last night, uh, I like astronomy and all that telescopes, but there's one goes on a small tripod. You could do it in an area that has a lot of light. It's small, it uh, connects to your cell phone, it's an app, put in the coordinates and they already have pre-programmed stuff and it filters the, the ambient light that's around that would ruin regular telescopes and it's digital and you could get constellations, out, um, the nebulas, I was like, oh my God. And it's, it's, it's maybe like this. It looks like uh, it comes in a box like a PS5 size, I guess. And that was amazing. It's about $600 and it's new, it's not, that's the prototype they were showing. I was like, oh, that's amazing to be able to do that. You know, in, a, in like two minutes, they could bring up a nebula. Mm -hmm. You know, it takes two minutes and it's digitized. Mm -hmm. you know, it has its own software and it keeps on taking photos. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it says, uh, he was talking and he says, I, I think my voice is shaking the mm -hmm. thing. So, and then it would delete that bad photo mm -hmm. out of the ones it keeps on snapping. So that that was amazing. You know I love stuff name? like that. By chance? Uh, you know what? I'll find out. I forgot the name of it, but anyone else? Maybe like two more, one more. Gimpy's a new one we haven't been talking about. We need to get them here to present. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to talk about that one? Sure. Yeah, go on. You know them, right? Yeah. So uh, Campy's a new one for those of you that don't know him. It's Dan Henderson and Brent Brett Dewey's, uh, who either are or were from Encino. So you know the Encino babies that are spinning out and becoming uh creating in our community so it's two dads that have seen the problem of scheduling summer camps um and that whole frenzy that occurs in november when you get up at midnight and you have to hit the button so you get into the right camp and how you coordinate with your neighbors so you can carpool and do you pack camp or pack lunch and what about when you have to drop off and, oh yeah, she threw me. Um, so they're developing a tech solution for summer camps. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be really awesome. I saw a cool, uh, and this shout out to uh, 
Jamie for her uh, Seahawk Innovation Challenge. They had like a kind of round table event last night. And not a round table, kind of like a, a fair kind of yeah, situation. Innovation. Yeah, innovation. Yeah, exposition in uh, well, it used to be CIF building. Now it's Congdon Hall. Um, but there was about Great. seven, eight, nine, ten. ten, 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 see, numbers. Uh, young entrepreneurs there to present about their students, uh, student entrepreneurs there to present about their companies, and they were all really, really good. They were awesome. It was really, really hard to vote. Them all to win. Yes, yeah, so yeah. it was very hard to vote. Um, I mean, I'll do. I mean, I can name them all, but I, I thought what was really cool is there's some surfers who are also like chemistry majors. Uh, P2P. Yeah, P2P. And they're, they've built this um, like a stronger resin, resin than mm -hmm. uh, your typical like surfboard. And uh, they had an example there and it was like noticeable, like softer versus mm -hmm. their situation was a, like an octagon. He was telling me chemistry stuff and I was just like, yeah, I didn't do well. I did do well in chemistry. But, <laughs> uh, it was octagonal. And so there's more places for the molecules to grab onto each other instead of the other one being square and it'll be four points of contact. So I thought that was really cool. I, another really good idea last night was a system that, um, you know, the, the car, cars now are smart enough that they can turn down volume if something's going on with your engine, but they're not listening to sirens. So if you're listening to loud music, you might not hear a, an emergency siren. And so what her idea is that, you know, a technology of license uh, that could, through AI, turn down the volume of your car when an emergency vehicle vehicles around you. I was like, what? Why hasn't that been done yet? Yeah. So if you want to hear more about them, cliffhanger, I'll let Jamie talk about it later, but there's an event next week for Global Entrepreneurship Week where the top three will be doing like a pitch contest for money. <laughs> so you'd be able to get to hear them a little bit more. And I'm going to try to get them all or all who are willing to come in here and present too. Some of them were still like very idea stage, but some of them actually were selling products there. So yeah. um, very different stages. Of hey Jack, the name is C Star, S E E Star. C Star. S you said S E E Star? S E E Star, yeah, C Star. Well, that's uh, five minute bucks right now. So, well, we're going to transition into hearing how Mariso eats class and certain to the events. <laughs> <laughs> this is over three years of experience being a web consultant. Um, he helps uh, lots of small businesses and businesses uh, basically uh, leverage uh, their customers to be more loyal and um, helps people find more customers in general, too. Um, so it's another marketer, he's been around um, already, so he, he kind of knows the format pretty well, and we're, we're glad to have uh, people who come in on a regular basis also want to come and present, too. And so I uh, give it up for Mauricio with Big Sleep. Yep, did yeah. I pronounce that right? Yeah. It's a pleasure to be here with you. My name is Mauricio, and I'm a web consultant. But today, I want to talk to you about how we as business owners can weather the economic storms around us. We've seen it. Inflation is going up. Prices go up with it. Interest rates are rising. And people, in general, are being more conservative with the way they spend money. That can affect our businesses. And so how can we survive through 2024? And yet, even more so, how can we grow in this environment in 2024? Well, I want to share with you three keys that will make sure that you can grow your business in 2024. Now, to start with, I want to tell you about the time, a time that I was um, in Little Italy in New York City with my wife. Now, I don't know if you've ever been to Little Italy, but it's blocks and blocks of restaurants, one after another after another. And each one has a menu card designed to entice the tourists to look at the menu and come in and eat. Well, on this day, business was kind of slow. There was no shortage of tourists, but business was kind of slow for most restaurants. I noticed people would go in, they would walk up to the menu card and then walk away. And they do this time after time, restaurant after restaurant. But then in the middle of the block, there was a restaurant that actually had a line of people waiting to get in. Now, I wondered, 
Why are people waiting to get into this restaurant when there's plenty of restaurants willing to seat them right away? So I looked at their menu card. Their menu card was different. It was simple. And next to every menu item, they had a picture of generously sized portions of delicious meals. That restaurant understood the problem they were solving. They conveniently satisfy your hunger. How do they do it? They serve generous portions of delicious food. And what do you need to do to get that solution? You need to come in and order a plate. People were willing to wait in line for that restaurant to get that solution. Now, what I see in a lot of small businesses is that they're using their most valuable real estate in a way that does not communicate the problem they solve. So if you want to survive in this climate, that valuable real estate on the top of your website has to clearly answer the question, what problem do I solve? How do I solve it? And how do you get that solution? If you can't get the attention of your clients this way, you won't succeed. But those businesses that can communicate clearly the problem they solve, those are the ones that are going to have an advantage, especially if they get the attention of their potential clients right away. So what is the first thing that we have to do in order to survive into 2024? We have to be clear. We have to be clear with our message. But now, let me tell you about another um, observation that I had. You know, this weekend, my wife and I are actually going away for the weekend, and we had to find a place to stay. Now, when you look for a place to stay in a place that is new to you, what is it you rely on? Reviews? How many stars? Maybe you're uh, renting a car or you're looking to buy a car. You're gonna look for the reviews. If you're looking for a new neighborhood to move into, you're gonna look for some reviews, some sort of marker aside from the people that are selling in the area to tell you, is this a neighborhood that I wanna be in? Is this a place that I wanna stay at for the weekend? Will I enjoy my activities? Is it convenient to where I'm gonna go? And that's true of any product you buy online. So what is that? What is it about reviews and opinions about our products that make it so compelling to buy from the ones that have good reviews? It's that they build trust. And you need to build trust because in a tight economic market where spending is limited and guarded, people are going to send their money and invest their money in solutions they can trust. There's no room for error. And so how do you build that trust? Well, again, many small businesses neglect their online reputation. They don't have many reviews online or the reviews they have are older, maybe more than six months old, more than a year old, more than two years old. So we need to garner good reviews from our clients, but we need to help them to also post those reviews in a way that is meaningful. And it also helps us to measure our performance. So the second key, we need to build trust. So we've covered two areas now that are gonna help us not only survive in this current economic climate, but succeed. We have to be clear in our message, and we have to build trust. Now, what's the next thing that you have to do? Well, I probably don't even need to mention the name of the company, but it's a company where you look at a product and you click one button and you're getting the product shipped to you in two days, no questions asked. Yeah, why do, why do we shop there? Why does everybody shop there? Because it's easy. They've made it easy for you to buy. In fact, many times you don't even realize how much you've ordered because it was just that easy. Costco, another great example. They've joined the uh, self-checkout 
uh, trend. But what do they do? They provide people to help you check out even at the self-checkout. And they can scan those items faster than you can even look at them. And that is because they're making the shopping experience easy. Now, what do we observe with businesses online? Oftentimes, their call to action either isn't there, so it's unclear for what a potential client should do, or that call to action leads to a page full of form fields to fill out, or maybe those form fields are accompanied by social media links, which drag the person out to their social media, or maybe other pictures or other information. In the end, how many of us have gotten to a contact form and not filled it out? So we need to make it easy. We need to remove the friction from our clients so that when they're ready to buy, when they're ready to take action, we make it easy for them to plug into our sales process. So what is the last uh, thing that we need to do? We need to make it easy. Clear and simple. Build trust. Make it easy. With these three things, any business can not only survive in 2024, but can succeed, can grow their business. So I invite you to really take Take note of these three principles and establish them if you're a business owner. And if you're a mentor for businesses, help businesses see the value of these three simple principles that can help us to succeed even in these difficult economic times. My name is Mauricio and I'm a web consultant. My company is Bixley. Thank you. I don't know if you've seen a more clear presentation yet, <laughs> but we're open up for a QA. Yes. Any questions? Please. I'm assuming that when you're working with a client, that you're um, figuring out their specific uh, weak points, right? Absolutely. What are you using to do that? Is there analytics from their social media or just like their email campaigns? Or... We, can, we can look at all of those, mm -hmm. but we take the time to speak with the owner and see what are their goals? What, are, what is the, their pain points? What do they wish they had more of in their business? It's true that tools and metrics and analytics are great, but at the end of the day, a business owner is really interested in results. And you can only know the results a business owner wants by speaking with a business owner. So that's why the key step in our initial process to help a client is our 15 minute introduction. Do you, sorry, I have a follow up question. Sure. This one. Um, when you are looking at solutions, are you offering like, when you're talking about um, easier user experience from like abandoned cart or like one reducing your form fill in, like how much you have to fill out a form or um, sending a follow up email if they did leave the form. Are you just offering the solutions like, hey, here's some things because you're weak here, or do you help with implement implementation by offering any kind of templates or anything like that? We provide a client acquisition system that's been proven and we've actually launched nationwide. So um, we implement the portions of that system that meet the problems that our client is trying to solve. So whatever it may be, we help implement that portion of the system that will help them reach their goals. So rather than have the client wade into the technology with us and be there in the trenches of the guts of the technology, which is not their core, core focus, their focus is do their business, solve the problems they're solving, we'll be solving the problem for our clients on the technical side, implementing our client acquisition system. Uh, um, what kind of businesses you focus on? Uh, online, e-commerce, uh, mom and pop shop, giant organization, contractors, plumbers. What's your focus? That's a good question. You know, I had I had coffee with a with a small business owner the other day, and he said, "Well, you know what? I think your solutions are the sort of solutions that Target needs or a big retailer needs." And it's true. I spent thirty years in corporate America. I've been. Uh, solving solutions and projects 
over a half a billion dollars in size. But why shouldn't small businesses also have that advantage? That's what I'm trying to bring to Wilmington. I want small businesses here to have the same advantage big corporations have because it's the small businesses that really build back our economy. So yes, we have big solutions. The, being a consultant may sound expensive, but it's not if it helps you succeed and grow your revenue. And that's what we want to do. Beauty on Zoom asked, uh, in a world of lots of competition, what are, uh, what's your competitive advantage or some differentiating factors? That's a good question. Many times when a business is shopping for an online presence, they may hire a web designer or they may hire a marketing person and they have their strengths and their value. A web designer is going to design a wonderful website and hand it to a business owner and say, here is your website. Or a marketing person may have a specific marketing campaign, hand it to the business owner and say, here's the campaign we're running. And that's it. What we do is we go beyond that. We're not just about delivering a pretty website. What we want to do is we want to deliver results. Our client acquisition system is proven because it helps you grow your business. And so by tailoring our client acquisition system to the problems you're trying to solve as a business owner, that's the key to making sure that you solve that problem. And we not only hold your hand and guide you through that process, we'll also guide your clients through the process so that they can plug into your sales process with less friction and therefore convert into a client. Uh, the typical question we love to ask all our presenters are what are three ways the community can help you? Right. Other than maybe the, the, the obvious one that's on the screen currently. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we want to help businesses in Wilmington. So look at your contacts. Is there a colleague that you think could benefit from these services? Great. Please get them in touch with us because we want to help. If you're a business owner and you feel like, I just need some direction, I need some help, get in touch with us. We want to see if we can help you. And if we're the right fit, we want to help you. Now, if you're a mentor guiding businesses, which I know many of you are, and I and you're guiding businesses as they start up, we are happy to help those businesses to be able to implement the principles that will enable them to really thrive online. So we just want to connect and help businesses. So we're here to help. Just point us in the direction where that help is needed, and we will be there. Yeah, two more. Two more ways? <laughs> two more ways. Okay. Well, I think one of the things we would like feedback. So as we work with you, give us your feedback because with good feedback, we can learn. And that's what we have been doing, in fact, with our second second test. We've been uh, taking a lot of uh, business websites, even local ones here, and running them through a panel of experts where we show them the above the fold of their website. And we asked those three questions. What problem do they solve? How do, how do they solve the problem? How do I get it? And are they trustworthy? And in that seven second test, we've been able to empower small businesses to be able to really see the opportunity for them to communicate their message more clearly. So we do that service free of charge. We don't charge anyone. So again, that is another way that we are trying to help businesses and we are gonna to continue to innovate. That feedback that we get helps us to be able to improve those services that we provide. And two more. Yeah. I, guess, more. I guess you don't need marketing help as well, I will need, or like commercial building maybe. We'll we to that we don't need a commercial building yeah. at this point. Um, we do work online. We will, we will uh, see you in person. And, you know, we take advantage of co-working spaces and coffee shops to meet with you because we feel that rather than have you come into an office, which may be not in a convenient place for you, 
will go to you. And when we have a cup of coffee, it's a more natural conversation where we can really explore what it is that you want us to do to succeed in your business. Judy also asked, uh, what's kind of like a price range for websites? You know, it would be unprofessional for me to give you a price because I don't know what, what problem you're trying to solve. Quite honestly, we tailor our solutions to the problem you're trying to solve. So I, I could charge you a million dollars for your problem, but that may not be really what you can afford. So again, remember, we're trying to bring the advantage of large corporations to the small business. So we're not gonna be charging you like you were a large corporation. And in the way we do that, the way we make this cost efficient is by tailoring our client acquisition system to meet your problems and solve those problems. At heart, we're helpers and we're problem solvers. And so the price will meet the problem that you need. And we hope to meet you at a point that's comfortable for you, that makes sense, and it will help you grow. When you say client acquisition system, is it a framework for solving problems? Is it a technology solution? Is it a combination of the two? I'm just trying to like understand that term. Yes, good, good question, thank you. Our client acquisition system is both a framework for running your business and the technical solutions that are needed to implement them. Anyone else would be like the last few questions? Let's fix it. How important is it today to have a bilingual site to be able to articulate your content to the community at large? Well, one of the three concepts we covered today, Jerry, is to be clear. And when language is a barrier, those potential clients are not going to be clear about your message. So it's true. We have a rich Latin community here, but we also have speakers of other languages. So finding those people and communicating to those communities that speak another language as their primary language, the language of their heart, is key. In fact, Many corporations are now investing in what they call Spanglish commercials on TV. You might have seen it. Some commercials, they, they, they speak in both English and Spanish. Yeah. That's because many children of Latin immigrants don't speak Spanish fluently, but Spanish is still at their core. And the way they speak is in Spanglish, a mixture of Spanish and English. So if large corporations are leveraging that a multilingual environment in their marketing efforts, shouldn't small businesses in Wilmington do the same? Jim asked if you're aware of Prospera USA for Latino entrepreneurs. I am not aware of Prospera USA. No, you are. But now yeah. I am, yes. <laughs> cool. Thank you, Jim. Yeah, we have a last, last question. Who wants it? No takers, come on. Please. Two. Uh, first of all, thank you for reminding me to order my cold brew coffee on Amazon. I've been taken care of. Thank you. Yes, they will be very happy. Um, we're on the AWS platform, and uh, it seems to be where we can, you know, be on about any server on the globe. Mm -hmm. And we may have to do that with the European Data Protection Act, which Ireland's thinking that they're going to put a fence around the country. Uh, have you had any experience with geofencing uh, in what you all do? We we personally have not done any geofencing. Usually smaller businesses are focused on their local communities, mm -hmm. but we do have partners that will help us enable those that sort of technology if our clients need it. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. Let's another round of applause from our <laughs> I'll leave the screen up. Um, before I go forward, I would like to congratulate the winners and finalists of NC Tech Awards that were last week. Um, David Mitchell with OPA, the Ohan Pai Crew, um, Aperture, uh, Arthur Fid, um, local Captain Landon Hill was a finalist, uh, Will Baird was a finalist with Correa's. Um, um, is that what we're missing people? 
Right. It will let me know. Active Defender. It will, yeah. There's, there's, uh, yep, that works. Uh, Active Defender and Jim will let me know if I'm missing anyone else. But uh, we'll transition now into events. We got a lot of events because next week is Global Entrepreneurship Week. Um, so I know I have a I have a slide for one of them. So I'll just pull so, that up. But before you uh, pull up the slide, today at 11 o'clock, SBTDC has their final AI um, uh, workshop here in this room. If anybody wants to just stay here and hang out until 11, today's uh, session is how to train AI for your small business. So it's about training the algorithm, 11 to noon here. And then after that at two, follow up on Mauricio's presentation today, we're doing a section on how to create content that converts. Nice. Two to three. Is that online? That will be online. Correct. So, Global Entrepreneurship Week, next week, we have a whole lineup of events that eight partners are participating in. Um, one of them I want to highlight because the deadline is today to sign up, and that's Mentor Madness. If you would like to come and get some mentorship from some of our mentors, I would love for you to sign up today. Um, this is not the one with the QR code. It is at the bottom. Sorry. Okay, cool. Zoom. Yeah. That bottom right one is the mentee. If you're one of our mentors, bottom left, um, come on out. It, it's, a, it's like a speed mentor session. Tons of fun. Right, Howard? Right. Yeah. And speed is the operative word. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was fun last year. So I hope you can uh, come hang out with us that morning. That's next Thursday morning. Uh, Jerry, do you want to talk about some of your events next week? Can you, can you pull them up? I <laughs> <laughs> uh, think we just started. <laughs> yeah. Wait, are you um, on we have, we have another. UNCW. Um, C I E G E W. Google that, and the whole, the whole list will come up. I know on the fifteenth we're doing a, a webinar on again back to yep. Mauricio's presentation on conversion rate, how to maximize your conversion rate. So that's kind of right in line with today's discussion. But we've got I think four of uh, four or five events next week throughout the week. So there we go. here's um, all the different partner events all week. Uh, at the top, um, Brunswick Community College is having a Women Empowerment Summit for three days. Tracy's going to you mention your sign up for that. And um, some of us are going to be up at the NCID Ecosystem, um, Ecosystem Summit. Uh, Jamie's going to be running the... Um, Innovation Challenge on the UNCW campus on Tuesday night, and that's open to public. Over, it's over in Cogden Hall, correct, Jamie? Yes, it is in um, Cogden Hall. There is uh, parking available after five in the two lots um, next to Sardarelli Hall, which is directly beside Cogden. Um, it goes from 5.30 to 7.30. We'll start with a networking social. Um, so we'll have free booze. Um, we will have some hors d'oeuvres. And then we'll shuffle everybody into the auditorium for the top three pitches. Um, so, yeah, please come. We'd love to have you there. Our students would love to have your support. And if you're not uh, blessed to be going to the NC uh, IDEA Ecosystem Summit, it's a wonderful alternative. So see you there. Booze, enough said. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's why I got it. <laughs> Shocker, we have million cups next week. Yep. Should be good. We got uh uh Evan Lord with Coach Note. And so he was uh here last week and it's really cool, really cool. And our software system is got Norks. And we do have Entrepreneur Day. Um some teachers and faculty reached out to me to ask for entrepreneurs to come on Wednesday, so much uh, most of that matchmaking has been done already. So entrepreneurs will be going out and sharing what it's like to be an entrepreneur with our youth and our community. Um, There's our email marketing 
uh, session there webinar. And then on Saturday, Josh will share what he has going on. Yeah, so I'll just back up. So tonight we have a uh, biz mix with the chamber. So if you're a chamber member or your business is a chamber member, it's going to be at the Blind Elephant tonight, which is in downtown. It'll be fun. We have a Young Professionals Council meeting tomorrow night at Common Desk in downtown. So if you're young and or consider yourself young, please come to that. Uh, well, networking and learning, we're learning about sports betting. Yes. Yeah. I don't know anything about that. So I'm, I'm interested. Um, let's see. Next week, we've got uh, Venture South is doing a, um, a, a breakfast meeting on Friday, November 17th at 8 o'clock in, in this space. Thank you, Heather. Uh, it's going to be open to the public, so if you've uh, been interested in Venture South, which, which is the largest angel network in the Southeast, uh, please come and learn about that organization. Um, and I think that's it. Oh, um, our Minority Holiday Bazaar is Saturday uh, next week. So if, you, uh, if you'd like to be a vendor or if you'd like to come and shop and get a head start on the holidays, please come to that on Saturday at the Chamber of Commerce. And Josh, why don't you tell everyone about your new responsibility uh, with Venture South? Oh, that's right. Yeah, so I am the, the Venture South Market Director. So really excited that the, the Chamber has taken that on. And, and Rob Kaiser started that group or brought that group here about four years ago. So we're just excited to try to keep it, maintain it, and, and hopefully grow, um, grow our angel investor network here. I know Jim's got uh, a ton of resources, too, with, with new. So I think that the whole... Um, I'm excited to be that that person. So don't hey. hesitate to reach out if you want to connect on that. So in summary, no one should be bored. Warrior drinks and network. Also has a uh, I'm pretty sure it's invite only, but uh, they have a oyster list for young professionals people. I guess they just took the email from the chamber of the young professionals council, but. Uh, and then there's a huge event going on in yes. Ironclad Brewery on Thursday night. We would be remiss if we don't mention that. Already 171 people have registered. And so this is Thursday night next week, 4 o'clock, Ironclad Brewery. Um, Jim Roberts lined up a venture, um, a, a, an investor who is part of a $150 million fund. It's a huge fund that's coming. It's part of Rise of the Rest. Um, it, this is uh, drawing um, really national attention of the Globe Launch Entrepreneurship Week um, organizers. That they were like, "How do? How were you able to do this?" I was like, "Don't ask me, ask Jim." So um, we're getting this is a big deal for for them to come. So um, if you're available, and if there's still room, because I know he was capping it, um, do sign up. What was the name of the fund? It's Revolution. Revolution Capital. Capital. Yeah. Jim, do you, do you want to add anything else? Or open sign up. Get it now. Sign up. Take your time. Do it now. Yeah, so we're having three speakers, actually. Um, the first opening speaker is Charlotte Ketelar, who's going to give 20 minutes on the process of due diligence. So what do the investors want to see after you give them the the pitch um they need a lot of documents and you need to have those documents already done before the pitch because if you go well i don't have them ready right now you're going to delay the investment by two to three months so you need to be overly prepared to meet with the investor um second is david hall is the name of the investor his is called revel uh, it's called rise of the rest fund it is part of Revolution Capital, and um, he's going to give 20 minutes kind of opening comments on what he does, and then he's going to be part of a chat. We call it the Riverside Chat with investor Tim McLaughlin with Co-Founders Capital, which is actually the most active venture capital fund in all of North Carolina, and they have made two investments in Wilmington. And this is brought to you by the Network for Entrepreneurs in Wilmington and the Whale Angel Network, which is the Whale Wilmington Angels for Local Entrepreneurs Angel Network that I run, uh, not just new, but Whale as well. So um, as I put in the chat, there's really four tickets left, um, and we're really expecting a big crowd. Not only that, but we're also having, we've chosen five local companies to meet with Mr. Hall one-on-one, -on -one, so that'll happen between 
lunch and the time of the event. He's only flying in for one day from 10 a.m. till 7, and he flies right back. So we're lucky to have him. And this, this event has taken actually eight years to pull off. I've been following Rise of the Rest Fund for eight years and begging them to come to Wilmington. And like most people, they just go, okay, leave us alone. We'll come, shut up, go away. And uh, I'm fine with that. So I hope you guys will attend. It'll be a great event. Thank you. One more thing. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, this isn't about an event. Speaking of building trust, if you ever have a second or if you think about staying until 11 and you have a minute, go on and review CIE. And I'm the director of Center for Innovation <laughs> and Entrepreneurship. If you don't know me, my name's Heather. On Google or what your platform of choice, we don't have very many reviews. And when you look at our reviews, it's like we have clean restrooms. I feel like <laughs> 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 That's Go into Google and review us, please. Thank you. Um, you also mentioned in the comments that uh, IBM just released a new fund for AI, a platform million dollar fund. Um, so if you're building something in the AI space, that's money. Uh, I was looking at that. Uh, does the Genesis block team have anything going on? So you you said you were all invented out for the rest of the year, right? Yeah, well, good turkey day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Just a juicy a news flash. Like the, I think I have the details right. Um, Johns Hopkins just got a hundred million dollar grant to do AI research, oh. and it comes with eight eighty new tenured faculty. So there's lots going on at Johns Hopkins. Now we're going to transition into um, for those people on Zoom. Um, this might be really hard to watch. Well, it's even impossible to see now on the on the screen because I've shown the people. Um, but uh, if you want to check out the schedule, you can uh, Google UNCWC at EDTEW Global Entrepreneurship Week, and it should come up uh, as a list. Um, so they're, they're going to add more to it as yeah. we speak, uh, we found out. And yeah. so um, check that out if you're on Zoom. Uh, transitioning to new people, if it's your first time, give us your name and like a sentence about what you do. Have you been here before? Yeah, you can go, sure. Yeah. I'm in the way back. I'm Rob McCord. I was a venture capital, a couple of capitalists until about 2007. And I was state treasurer up in Pennsylvania. Buddies and a fan of Jordan who said I should definitely show up. Just looking to get to know the ecosystem. Sweet. Thanks. Definitely RCP for Jim's event right now. <laughs> that it? Cool. Well, thanks for coming million cups. Uh, we got a great rest of the year scheduled out, so make sure you come and invite your friends. Let's keep this at the lowest numbers we got. But yeah, Lou. Yeah. Nothing. No meeting the week after next. No meeting. Um, the week. That's the week. Not not like the day before Thanksgiving. Like like, yeah, no meeting on the twenty second. And then, um, no meeting up, of course, like before Christmas. Um, but we do have the rest of the year scheduled out, and they're all great. So make sure to come bring your friends, fill the room, standing room only. Yeah, that's all I got. Thank you. yeah, I'm a
Yeah, I know Oh, you have What a cool name.